this lesson, we start the discussion with the blockchain background of cryptocurrencies. Next, we introduce modern monetary and payment systems and explain it with the help of money flower concept. We highlight how cryptocurrencies have emerged as a novel instrument in this money flower taxonomy. Next, we discuss the market dynamics and volatility of cryptocurrencies with the help of blockchain example. Subsequently, we discuss the distributed ledger technology and its application in cryptocurrency blockchains. We discuss both the permissioned and permissionless blockchain. We explain the mechanics of cryptocurrency transactions with the help of a simple example. Next, we discuss the benefits of cryptocurrencies. Then we explain the evolution and market dynamics including historical prices, market capitalization of cryptocurrencies with the help of two major currencies namely Bitcoin and Ethereum. We also compare and draw parallels between cryptocurrency and conventional monetary instruments such as cash and bank deposits. Lastly, we discuss some of the challenges faced by cryptocurrencies due to the limitation of permissionless blockchains. Then we conclude the discussion with a comparison between fiat currency and cryptocurrencies. In this video, we will introduce cryptocurrencies with the blockchain background behind them. In the previous lesson, we discussed that blockchains are tamper evident and tamper resistant digital ledgers implemented in a distributed fashion often like without a central repository and usually without a central authority like a bank or government. At their very basic level, they enable a community of users to record transactions, these blockchains, to record transactions in a shared ledger within that community such that under normal operation of the blockchain network, no transaction can be changed once published. So it's like immutable chain. In 2008, this blockchain idea was combined with several other technologies and computing concepts to create what we call as modern cryptocurrencies or electronic cash protected through cryptographic mechanisms instead of central repository like a central bank. The first such blockchain based cryptocurrency was Bitcoin which is running today. Now within the Bitcoin blockchain, information representing electronic cash is attached to a digital address. Bitcoin users can digitally sign and transfer rights to that information to another user and the Bitcoin blockchain records this transfer publicly, allowing all the participants of the network to independently verify the validity of the transactions. The Bitcoin blockchain is stored, maintained and collaboratively managed by a distributed group of participants. This along with certain cryptographic mechanisms makes the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain resilient to attempts to alter the ledger later like modifying blocks or forging the transactions or duplicating the transactions. What we have already discussed as double spend problem is an example of it. Lastly, the blockchain technology is the foundation of the modern cryptocurrencies. So named because of the heavy usage of cryptographic functions. Users utilize public and private keys here to digitally sign. So you have public and private keys as we have already discussed to digitally sign and securely transactions within that blockchain system. For cryptocurrency based blockchain networks like Bitcoin, which utilize mining, users may solve these puzzles using cryptographic hash functions in the hope of being rewarded with the native currency with a certain amount of native cryptocurrency. However, blockchain technology may be more broadly applicable than just simply cryptocurrencies. And this mining process we have already discussed in the previous lessons. To summarize this video, we noted that in Bitcoin and similar systems, the transfer of digital information that represents the electronic cash takes place in a distributed system. Bitcoin users can digitally sign and transfer their rights to that information to another user and the Bitcoin blockchain records this transfer publicly, allowing all the participants of the network to independently verify the validity of the transactions. The Bitcoin blockchain is independently maintained and managed by a distributed group of participants. This along with cryptographic mechanisms makes the blockchain resilient to attempts to alter the ledger later like modifying and forging the transactions and like blockchain technology has thus enabled the development of many cryptocurrency systems such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. In this video, we will discuss cryptocurrencies in the backdrop of monetary and payment system. We will also apply the money flower concept to it. Let us start with the tried and tested central bank payment system. The tried, trusted and resilient way to provide confidence in money in the modern times is the independent central bank. This means agreed goals, clear monetary policy and financial stability objectives. 
operational instrument like interest rate and administrative independence democratic accountability so as to ensure broad based political support and legitimacy independent central banks have largely achieved the goal of safeguarding society's economic and political interest in a stable currency the fiat currency with this setup money can be accurately defined as an indispensable social convention backed by an accountable institution within the state that enjoys public trust in almost all modern day economies money is provided through a joint public private venture between the central bank and private banks with the central bank at the core of the system often electronic bank deposits are the central or main means of payment between ultimate users while central bank reserves are the means of payment between banks in this two tiered system trust is generated through independent and accountable central banks which banks reserves through their asset holdings and operational rules in turn the trust in bank deposits is generated through a variety of means including regulation supervision and deposit insurance schemes many of them ultimately emanating from the power of state now as part of fulfilling their mandate to maintain a stable unit of account and means of payment central banks take an active role in supervising overseeing and in some cases providing the payments infrastructure for their currency here the central bank's role includes ensuring that the payment system operates smoothly and seeing to it that the supply of reserves responds appropriately to shifting demand including at intraday frequency that is ensuring an elastic elastic money supply lastly thanks to the active involvement of central bank today's diverse payment systems have achieved safety cost effectiveness scalability and trust that a payment once made is final thus payment systems in modern world or modern economies are safe and cost effective they can handle high volumes and accommodate rapid growth with hardly any abuse and at low cost an important contributor to safety and cost effectiveness is scalability in today's sophisticated economies the volume of payments is huge equal to many multiples of gdp despite these large volumes expanding use of the instrument does not lead to a proportional increase in cost this is important since an essential feature of any successful money and payment system is how widely used it is by both buyers and sellers the more others connect to a particular payment system the greater one's own incentive to use it in this backdrop users not only need to have trust in the money itself they also need to trust that a payment will take place promptly and smoothly a desirable operational attribute is the certainty of payment or finality and the related ability to contest transactions that may have been incorrectly executed finality requires that the system be largely free of fraud and operational risk at the level of both individual transactions and the system as a whole so strong oversight and central bank accountability both help to support finality and hence the trust in this backdrop while most modern day transactions occur through means ultimately supported by central banks over time a wide range of public and private payment systems have also emerged these can be best summarized by a taxonomy characterized as money flower as we can see here this money flower taxonomy the money flower distinguishes four key properties of the money this includes the issuer for example issuer can be a central bank or the system where there is no central authority the central bank as was the case when the money took the form of a commodity so one major issuer can be central bank and like we said an other system could be where there is no central authority the other system or the other taxonomy is of the form the form can be physical like metal coin paper like banknote or digital like today we have upi system in india or cryptocurrency the other is degree of accessibility so it can be widely accessible like a commercial bank deposit or like a central bank reserve less accessible so that is also there so accessibility can be very wide high or low then you have the payment transfer mechanism so you can have a payment transfer mechanism one extreme is like peer to peer and other extreme would be like a central bank inter through a central bank intermediary like for deposits so each of these four dimensions the accessibility the digital or not so digital the central bank 
focused or there is no central authority and peer to peer or there is some intermediary so all these have two extreme ends as we discussed so let's take instrument my instrument so if you think of cash cash is cash is widely accessible the cash is also can be transferred peer to peer in india there is a uh, so here we are thinking in terms of fiscal cash but in india you have a upi version of digital cash valets also but here we are thinking of physical cash term so it is not part of that digital shape then it is also a central bank issued so it is in this green shape now you have this virtual currency that virtual currency is digital it is not central bank issued like cryptocurrency is not central bank issued so it is not there it's outside that it is often not widely accessible so it is out, outside it so this way you can think of it bank deposits for example if you take bank deposits so bank deposits are widely accessible they are issued by private banks so not in the green shape they are also not peer to peer they are through banks there is an intermediary so in this way each of the instrument can be sort of categorized in all these dimensions like widely accessible digital central bank issued and peer to peer and so on lastly if you think of digital currency particularly in the permission version of digital ledger it will be digital so it is in the blue blue shape then it is also peer to peer so it is in the yellow kind of shape it is not part of central bank so it is not in the green and also not so much widely accessible so it, because to access you need to have certain systems and uh, com certain computing power and so on so it is not part of that red widely accessible shape so this way you can in under this taxonomy you can define cryptocurrency also here while discussing money one needs to make distinction between two forms of money or two basic technologies called tokens like the cash in a physical form or account based like bank deposits now token based money for example bank notes or physical coins can be exchanged in a peer to peer setting but such exchanges rely critically on the pay's ability to verify the validity of the object for example with cash you are worried about counterfeit or counterfeiting of notes so you would like to have your cash or the physical form of the cash to be unforgeable and valid not counterfeit in contrast when systems are based on account money like bank deposits they fundamentally depend on the ability to verify the identity of account holder now in this case an intermediary like a bank a private commercial bank would verify the identity of account holder and then only the transaction would take place so to summarize this video we introduced the modern payment systems and we also discussed the money flower taxonomy concept of money across which we can classify various monetary instruments and lastly we discussed how cryptocurrency falls on this money flower taxonomy in this video we'll discuss the rise of a new flower cryptocurrency monetary instrument in our taxonomy of money flower to begin with we note that cryptocurrencies aspire to be a new form of currency and promise to maintain interest in the stability of their value through the use of technology thus the cryptocurrencies these cryptocurrencies consist of three key elements first a set of rules or protocol that is computer code specifying how participants can transact second a ledger storing the history of transaction and third a decentralized network of participants that update store and read the ledger of transactions following the rules of the protocol with these three elements they advocate or claim that a cryptocurrency is not subject to potentially misguided incentives of banks and sovereign fiat currencies coming back to our money flower taxonomy cryptocurrencies can be identified there with and they combine three key features first they are digital aspiring to be a convenient means of payment and relying on cryptography to prevent counterfeiting and fraudulent transactions second although they are created privately they are nobody's liability unlike the conventional currencies like cash that is for example dollar rupee so they cannot be redeemed and their value derives only from the expectation that they will continue to be accepted by others this makes them akin to a commodity money although without an intrinsic value in that sense and lastly 
these cryptocurrencies allow for digital peer to peer exchange which is very important compared with other private digital money such as bank deposits the distinguishing feature of the cryptocurrency is the digital peer to peer exchange what it means is that digital bank accounts have been around for decades and privately issued virtual currencies for example as used in the massive multiplayer online games like warcraft and so on they predate cryptocurrencies by more than a decade however in contrast to these the cryptocurrency transfers in principle takes place in a decentralized kind of setting without the need for a central counterparty to execute and verify the exchange so underlying this setup the three key features the key features of these cryptocurrencies is the implementation of set of rules that aim to align the incentives of all the participants so as to create a reliable payment technology without a centralized trusted agent now the protocol determines the supply of these assets in order to counter debasement for example in the case of bitcoin it states that not more than 21 million bitcoins can exist and in addition the protocol is designed to ensure that all participants follow the rules of this rules out of self interest that is they yield a self sustaining equilibrium now like we said there are three key aspects or features associated with this as follows first the rules entail a cost to updating ledger this distributed ledger in most cases this cost comes because updating requires that proof of work consensus mechanism which is a mathematical evidence as we have discussed in the previous lesson this mathematical evidence that a certain amount of computational work has been done and in turn calling for costly equipment and electricity consumption since this proof of work process can be likened to a digging up rare numbers via laborious computations it is often referring to as mining in return for their effort these miners receive fees in the form of native currency from the users and if specified by the protocol some newly minted native cryptocurrency next all miners and users of cryptocurrency verify all ledger updates which include miners to include only valid transactions valid transactions need to be initiated by the owners of fund and must not be attempts to double spend or malicious attacks so if a ledger update includes an invalid transaction it is rejected by the network and the miners rewards are voided the verification of all new ledger updates by the network of miners and users is thus essential to incentives or sort of incentivize miners to add only valid transactions so this incentivizes miners to add only valid transactions and lastly the protocol that we discuss specifies the rules to achieve a consensus on the order of updates to the ledger what it means is that this is generally done by creating incentives for individual miners to follow the computing majority of all the miners when they implement updates such coordination is needed for example to resolve cases where communication lags lead to different miners adding conflicting updates that is updates that include different set of transactions to summarize in this video we discuss the role of cryptocurrencies as a new flower in the money flower taxonomy we also noted three very key important aspects of the cryptocurrencies first the protocol on which they are run second the digital aspect and lastly the peer to peer lending and transaction this peer to peer lending is sort of decentralized network or decentralized nodes and another important is aspect is the ledger distributed ledger aspect of these cryptocurrencies which makes them a unique new flower in the money flow taxonomy in this video we'll briefly introduce cryptocurrencies and discuss their market dynamics to begin with cryptocurrencies are digital tokens they are type of digital currency that allows people to make payments directly to each other through an online system cryptocurrencies have no legislated or internal value intrinsic value like a fiat currency or any other stock they are simply worth what people are willing to pay for them in the market so there is no intrinsic value there are number of cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies particularly the most well known of these are bitcoin and ethereum or ether now just like the fiscal money for example dollar for us dollar united states dollar or mexican peso crypto can also help you buy goods and services so we can say that crypto or cryptocurrency is a digital currency that operates slightly differently differently from the traditional currencies like dollar and peso just like physical money 
like dollar and peso you can buy goods and services and cryptocurrency also functions as an investment in the same way like metal goods commodity and as a hedge against ups and downs of government issued money and other assets however while a centralized government issues fiscal money cryptocurrency money comes from decentralized system of digital record keeping or what we call as distributed ledger system of blockchain where it is not regulated by an official authority let us briefly discuss the activity of cryptocurrency markets so activity in cryptocurrency markets has increased significantly in the last 5 to 10 years as we can see on this graph there has been periods of extreme rise then fall then rise and fall it's like periods of boom and bust the fascination with these currencies appears to have been more speculative as we can see here with these periods of boom and bust buying cryptocurrencies to make a profit just for speculative reason rather than any fundamental asset behind it or fundamental reason and also more than related to their use as a new or unique system of making payments so this is less of a case more is being a speculative asset make buying to make it pro make a profit related to this there are also been high degree of volatility in prices of many cryptocurrencies for example the price of bitcoin increased from about $30,000 in mid 2021 to almost $70,000 by end of 2021 so you can see how sharp up movements and also falling around to $35,000 in 20, early 2022 rival currencies like ether have also experienced similar volatility this extraordinary interest in cryptocurrencies has also seen a growing amount of computing power used to solve the complex codes that many of these systems use to help protect them from being corrupted like proof of work consensus mechanism and despite the increased level of interest in cryptocurrencies there is also a skepticism about whether they could ever replace the traditional modes of payment or what we call as national fiat currencies let us also discuss the briefly the nature of volatile markets in crypto so crypto is a rapidly growing market that saying that crypto has made queens and paupers but these wins and losses don't necessarily come from winners picking good coins and losers picking bad ones it is possible to talk to two people who have both invested in doji coin but one lost money and another gained the profit so whether you win or lose can depend largely on timing this is so because cryptocurrency is an incredibly sort of volatile topsy turvy investment and all cryptocurrencies experience huge fluctuations in their valuation a quality known on wall street as volatility so cryptocurrency is an incredibly volatile investment in one day bitcoin value dropped 30% but why such volatility cryptocurrencies are particularly famous for exposing investors to wild price changes bitcoin for example appreciated more than 70% during first quarter of 2021 during the first quarter but on may 19 of that year dropped by 30% in the course of day before recovering some of its value do such dramatic climbs and falls reflect changes in fundamental information about crypto assets or they are driven by investor sentiment and as cryptocurrencies become more salient to the financial system does their price volatility pose a risk to broader financial stability this question brings up something that we often forget with cryptocurrency that it isn't intrinsically valuable there isn't any gold or diamonds or anything backing this crypto's value at no point did the us treasury or indian central bank say that yes any time someone wants to bring us a bitcoin we'll give them x number of rupees or dollars from our reserves not all die hard crypto fans would agree but there is an argument that crypto's value really comes from how much people are willing to trade for it in terms of goods other cryptocurrencies or dollars now there are investors who are interested in crypto not to use it as currency but to use it as a hedge against inflation or as investment vehicle but without anything intrinsically valuable backing up the currency crypto's market value is based entirely on speculation which is essentially educated guesswork investing in something that is speculative is a guaranteed way to introduce volatility in your portfolio it means that investment value isn't very grounded which makes its price incredibly sensitive to even slight changes in investors expectations and perceptions for example the musk effect or the phenomenon of how strongly the value of bitcoin affected by elon musk tweets as elon musk tweets go so does so goes the crypto market up and down and this is true for many such currencies 
to summarize in this video we briefly discussed the properties of cryptocurrencies and focused on market dynamics of bitcoin we also noted that these crypt cryptocurrencies unlike other fiat currencies or traditional commodities or assets have nothing backing them and a major motive to invest in these currencies is not as a currency or a store of value but for speculative purposes to make profits and these currencies are often affected by prevailing sentiment for example the two elon musk tweets have led to many currencies fluctuating up and down so these comp currencies when you introduce them to your portfolio or buy them you also expose to more volatility in a series of next two videos we'll discuss the application of distributed ledger technology in the case of cryptocurrencies let us start the discussion about distributed ledger technology in cryptocurrencies the technological challenge in digital peer to peer exchange is the so called double spending problem any digital form of money is easily replicable and can thus be fraudulently spent more than once thus digital information can be reproduced more easily than physical banknotes for digital money solving the double spending problem requires at a minimum that someone keeps a record of all the transactions now prior to cryptocurrencies the only solution was to have a centralized agent do this and verify all the transactions cryptocurrencies overcame this double spending problem via decentralized record keeping through what is known as a distributed ledger this ledger can be regarded as a file think of it as a excel work file that starts with an initial distribution of cryptocurrencies and records the history of all subsequent transactions an up to date copy of the entire ledger is stored by each of the user and that is what makes it distributed character now with a distributed ledger peer to peer exchange of digital money is feasible and each user can directly verify their copy of the ledger whether a transfer took place or that there was an attempt to double spend now please note that while all cryptocurrencies rely on a distributed ledger they differ in terms of how the ledger is updated for example there are two broad classes one is permission and one is permissionless which differ substantially in their operational setup we'll discuss them one by one let us start the discussion with distributed ledger technology which is per of permission nature now this class is based on permission dlt or distributed ledger technology such cryptocurrencies are similar to conventional payment mechanisms that to prevent abuse the ledger can only be updated by a trusted participants in this cryptocurrency often termed as trusted node so for example there is some kind of authorization mechanism which authorizes the trusted or the member nodes only so there is some kind of authorization mechanism and only these trusted nodes can update the information now these trusted nodes are chosen by and subject to oversight by some kind of central authority like the firm that developed the cryptocurrency or some kind of central banking system and so on thus while cryptocurrencies based on permission systems differ from con conventional money in terms of how transaction records are stored for example centralized versus decentralized here it's decentralized because there are number of nodes but they share with it the reliance on specific institutions as the ultimate source of trust so whether a node is to be trusted depends on the authority that is given to it by some kind of central authority to summarize in this video we discussed the distributed ledger technology dlt in the context of cryptocurrencies we discussed one method which is permission approach to distributed ledger technology application in cryptocurrencies in the next video we'll discuss the permissionless approach to the same in this video we'll conclude our discussion about cryptocurrencies with respect to distributed ledger technology and permissionless blockchains in a much more radical departure from the prevailing institutional based setup a second class of cryptocurrencies or rather more wider class of cryptocurrencies promise to generate trust in a fully decentralized setting using permissionless distributed ledger technology or permissionless dlt now the ledger recording transactions here can only be changed by a consensus of the participants in the currency or the blockchain of the currency while anybody can participate here nobody has a special key to change the ledger so there are number of member nodes there is no such authorization mechanism or a central party all these are just part of the 
blockchain there is no special permission or authorization here the concept of permissionless cryptocurrencies started with the case of bitcoin it was a white paper by an anonymous programmer or maybe a group of programmers because their entity is not known under the pseudonym of satoshi nakamoto satoshi nakamoto who proposed a currency which is bitcoin on a specific type of distributed ledger the blockchain here the blockchain is the distributed ledger that is updated in groups of transaction called blocks blocks here are then chained sequentially via the use of cryptography to form the blockchain this we have discussed in great detail in the previous lessons now this concept has been adapted to countless other cryptocurrencies and blockchain based permissionless cryptocurrencies have two groups of participants one is called miners who rather act as bookkeepers and users who want to transact or initiate the transaction in the cryptocurrency on that particular blockchain now at face value the idea underlying these cryptocurrencies is simple instead of a bank centrally controlling the transactions the ledger is updated by a miner and the update is subsequently stored by all the users and miners on the chain so there are multiple such users and miners and all the miners and users update their information or ledger on the chain now underlying this setup the key features of these cryptocurrencies is the implementation of a set of rules what we call as protocol that aim to align the incentives of all the participants so as to create a reliable payment technology without a centralized trusted agent like a central bank like rbi the protocol here determines the supply of the asset in order to counter the debasement so for example in the case of bitcoin it is stated or the protocol states that not more than 21 million bitcoins should exist 20 million is the maximum bitcoin after which supply would cease in addition the protocol is also designed to ensure that all the participants follow these rules out of self interest that is some kind of incentive and that yields or results in a self sustaining endogenous equilibrium so that results in a self sustaining endogenous equilibrium on the blockchain transactions now this kind of decentralized permissionless mechanism results in three very important aspects and features on the blockchain first the rules entail a cost to updating the ledger in most cases this cost comes about because updating requires some kind of consensus mechanism like proof of work this is like a mathematical evidence this proof of work is like a mathematical evidence we have discussed this in great detail in the previous lesson that a certain amount of computational work needs to be done and in turn calling for costly equipment and electricity consumption since this proof of work process can be likened to digging up rare numbers via laborious calculations and computations it is often referred to as mining process and those who do it called miners on the blockchain and because of this mining activity in return for their efforts these miners receive what we call as fees from users for example block rewards and transaction fees and if specified by the protocol some this reward is nothing but the newly minted cryptocurrency the native cryptocurrency from the block second all miners and users of a cryptocurrency verify all ledger updates which includes miners to include only valid transactions so valid transactions need to be initiated by the users or owners of the fund and must not be attempts to double spend if a ledger update includes an invalid transaction it is rejected by the network and the miner rewards are voided so then they won't get reward if it is an invalid transaction the verification of all new ledger updates by the network of miners and users is thus very essential to incentivize miners to add only valid transactions so there is an incentive mechanism for the miners to validate the transactions which sort of rewards them for this service or activity third the protocol specifies rules to achieve a consensus on the order of updates to the ledger now this kind of consensus is generally done by creating incentives for individual miners to follow the computing majority of all of the miners when they implement updates such coordination is needed recall our byzantine general problem and such coordination is needed for example to resolve cases where communication lag may lead to different miners adding conflicting updates that is updates that include different sets of transactions 
Now with these key, key ingredients, it is costly, though not impossible for any individual to forge a cryptocurrency. To successfully double spend a counterfeiter would have to spend their cryptocurrency with a merchant and secretly produce a forged blockchain block, a block with the forged information which is incorrect, in which this transaction was not recorded. Upon receipt of the merchandise, the counterfeiter would then release the forged blockchain, forged blockchain that is reverse the payment. But this forged blockchain would only emerge as the commonly accepted chain if it were longer than the blockchain than the rest of the network of miners had produced in the meantime. Now, a successful double spend attack like this requires a substantial share of mining community's computing power. In fact, a huge amount of computing power. Conversely, in the words of the original Bitcoin white paper, a cryptocurrency can overcome this double spend problem in a decentralized way only if honest nodes control a majority of the computing power. To summarize, in this video, we discussed how permissionless blockchains or blockchains that are based on distributed ledger technology using permissionless blockchains operate through a set of protocol and rules, how they ensure that even in the absence of a centralized authority, the transactions are correctly verified, validated and miners or the nodes or computer members on the blockchain, they get rewarded and out of this incentive mechanism, they act in the best interest of blockchain by validating these transactions by putting computing power and effort. In this video, we'll understand cryptocurrency transactions with the help of a simple example. Please note, cryptocurrency transactions occur through electronic messages that are sent to the entire network with instructions about the transaction. These instructions include information such as electronic addresses of the parties involved, the quantity of the currency to be traded, and a timestamp. Suppose Alice wants to transfer one unit of cryptocurrency to Bob. Now, Alice starts the transaction by sending an electronic message with the instructions to the network where all the users can see the message. So now the transaction is initiated by Alice. Alice sends the instruction to transfer the cryptocurrency to Bob and this signal is transmitted to all the member nodes on the or all the nodes on the blockchain. Anyone using the network can view this message. So it is available to all public. Now, Alice transaction is one of a number of transactions that have recently been sent. Since the system is not instantaneous, the transaction sits with a group of other recent transactions waiting to be compiled into a block, which is just a group of most recent transactions. So the miners or the members on this, those who are using or on this network blockchain, they'll group the transaction together into a block with the recent transaction. So all the more recently concluded transactions will be added to a block. Now the information in the block is turned into a cryptographic code through hash function and miners compete to solve the code to add the new block of transaction to the blockchain. So information from the new block is transformed into a cryptographic code of some sort. So this block information that is there is add, created into some kind of code, cryptographic code through hash function and miners try to solve this puzzle, this kind of mathematical puzzle for them. And the miners, they will compete to find the code. And once they perform or compute this mathematical puzzle, the new block will be added to the blockchain. So once a miner successfully solves the code, other users of the network will verify his solution like proof of work mechanism and reach an agreement that his solution or proof of work is valid. And therefore the block is verified. The new block of transaction is added to the end of blockchain and Alice transaction is confirmed. So once the code is solved by the miner, the block is added to the blockchain and the transaction is confirmed and it is verified all by all the, all the nodes on the blockchain. So it is added, the new block is added to the blockchain, the blockchain elongates, it is added and the transaction is successful. Now this confirmation of the successful transaction is not instant, it is take time for blocks of transaction to be processed so that users can be certain that their transaction has been successful. And if it is successful, then Bob's receive the cryptocurrency. To summarize, in this video, we saw with the help of a simple example, how a cryptocurrency transaction works with the help of distributed ledger technology that is blockchain. In this video, we'll discuss the benefits of cryptocurrencies 
that have led to the widespread adoption of the same. There are several advantages of using cryptocurrencies over traditional or fiat money. From its ease of use to its availability and security, cryptocurrency has become a viable alternative to traditional money by offering users new and unique features. Let us discuss some of these benefits and features. First, very low transaction costs. The blockchain that supports cryptocurrency replaces traditional payment processes that verify payments and transfers. By removing these middlemen such as banks from the equation, crypto allows users to make purchases with much lower fees than actual currency. Next, anyone can use it. Cryptocurrencies hold a great value for people who lack access to banks or unbanked population. Unlike setting up a bank account, which often requires several layers of identification and documentation, users need only a smartphone or access to the internet to use cryptocurrency. No limit on transactions. The lack of centralized authority and control means that no one can impose limits on crypto transactions. Crypto users are free to use their assets as often as they like without any restrictions on the number of purchases or withdrawals. One can send funds to locally and internationally also. Because crypto exists online only, there are no boundaries. It is easy to transfer money 24-7 anywhere. You can access your money. You can send it to anybody. So another advantage is 24 by 7 access to your money. Crypto doesn't keep bankers hours. There are no intermediaries. The publicly available record is viewable all the time and users do not have to wait to access their funds. It's private, secure and provides quasi anonymity. The technology that powers cryptocurrency, the blockchain distributed ledger ensures that users stay anonymous. And advanced cryptography practices ensure that digital currency is safe from thieves. Bitcoin has never been hacked to date. However, scamming and fraud are com common in the crypto space as with all the currencies. Lastly, and most importantly, it is decentralized. Cryptocurrencies do not need a government or company to record transactions, issue new currency or record investments. No bad economic policy or bank breakup can directly affect their value. To summarize, in this video, we discussed the key features and properties of cryptocurrencies. First, low transaction costs, widespread usage, no limits on transactions. One can send funds locally, internationally across borders, 24 by 7 access to your money, private and secure, anonymity and decentralized peer-to-peer access. In this video, we'll understand the trading activity of Bitcoin and its evolution with the help of changes in market cap and pricing. The most well-known cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. It was launched in 2009, a year after the report that described the Bitcoin system and was released under the name Satoshi Nakamoto. The system was designed to electronically mimic features of a cash transaction. It was designed to allow peer-to-peer -peer or person-to-person -person transactions without the need to know or trust the other person in the transaction and to occur without the need for a central party such as central bank. Unlike conventional national currencies such as dollars, which get part of their value from being legislated as a legal tender, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies do not have any legislated or intrinsic or internal value. Instead, the value of Bitcoin is determined by what people are willing to pay for it in the open market and in theory its value could very well fall to zero at any time. Now, one feature of Bitcoin system is that of its supply. It increases at a certain predetermined rate and is capped at around 21 million after which the supply will stop. Also, each Bitcoin is subdivided into 100 million Satoshis or what you can say is 10 to the power minus 8 fraction, which relationship is sort of similar to rupee, passe and dollar cent. Because of this, the supply of Bitcoin has been commonly compared to the supply of a scarce commodity like gold because of this limited supply of 21 million. The Bitcoin system allows transactions to occur directly from person to person without requiring a central party counterparty to verify or record the transactions. This is unlike most conventional payment methods such as electronic bank transfers which rely on a central party to keep and update record of transactions. For example, commercial banks maintain a record of their customers account balances, deposits and withdrawals. Instead, the Bitcoin system uses blockchain technology as we have been discussing in the previous lessons 
to record transaction and the ownership of bitcoins this is essentially the technology that connects group of transactions or what you call as blocks and connect these blocks together over time in the form of a chain what you call as blockchain so blocks connected and make blockchain each time a transaction occurs it forms part of a new block that is added to the chain and as a result the blockchain provides a record or database of every bitcoin transaction that has ever occurred and is available for anyone to access and update on a public network this is often referred to as a distributed ledger or dlt that we have discussed in the previous lessons lastly the integrity of this bitcoin system as we have discussed is protected by cryptography which is a method of verifying and securing data using complex mathematical algorithms or computer codes now this makes the system very difficult to correct bitcoin transactions are verified by other users of the network and the process of compiling verifying and confirming transactions is often referred to as mining in particular complex codes need to be solved to confirm transactions and make sure that the system is not corrupted thus the bitcoin system increases the complexity of these codes as more and more computing power is used to solve them a new block of transactions is compiled approximately every 10 minutes and miners want to solve the codes and process transactions because they are rewarded with new bitcoins or native cryptocurrency on that particular blockchain now this increase in competition between miners for new bitcoins has seen a large increases in the amount of computing power and electricity consumption particularly for running the computer systems and cooling requirement while it is difficult to calculate with precision some estimates suggest that now the annual energy consumption of bitcoin system has roughly become equal to smaller countries like thailand let us discuss the evolution of bitcoin market cap as you can see in this diagram it has witnessed lot of tumultuous period there have been periods of boom and bust bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency ever introduced and considered as digital gold and it currently has a market cap of 858.77 billion dollars which is the largest of any variant of cryptocurrency a unit of bitcoin can be broken into 100 million satoshis which is equivalent to the relationship between rupee paise or dollar cent Furthermore the bitcoin network is so des designed that it can only have maximum 21 million units of bitcoin circulation at any point in time and this limited availability is a primary component that also drives its sort of limits its supply and drives its prices some other important information points are as follows bitcoin had a market cap of 1.2 billion dollar on may 1st may 2013 it took bitcoin nearly 9 years from the date of its creation to reach the 100 billion mark when it reached 100.1 billion in market capitalization around october 2017 and from october 2017 to 2020 the market capitalization of bitcoin remained under 250 billion dollar mark but from november 2020 to february 2021 the bitcoin grew at an unprecedented rate of 321% to reach or the breach the 1000 billion dollar capitalization briefly and on november 2021 itself bitcoin briefly reached its highest market capitalization of 1.28 trillion with a price of around 67617 per bitcoin so it witnessed a quite a huge tumultuous up and down but mostly it has been a story of high growth as we can see and that is why it has been it has captivated the investor community let us also discuss the pricing history of bitcoin and like we discuss its market cap it has been a history of growth but filled with periods of booms and bust In the history of cryptocurrencies bitcoin has played a very pivotal role and emerged as a major cryptocurrency and also it has been part of all the speculative bubbles or what we call as crypto crashes in 2011 13 17 21 all the crypto crashes during the initial years bitcoin had limited popularity and would occasionally breach the double digit threshold but would soon turn to the single digit price range so there have been periods of rise and fall and it was not until 2013 that bitcoin broke the 1000 dollar mark and gained popularity and it briefly attained that 1127 dollars price around november 2013 then bitcoin stayed in the higher three digit range during the first half of 2014 but soon began sliding in the lower three digit range and finally hit the lower of 172 dollars around january 2015 now from 2015 to 17 bitcoin rose in value to reach the high three digit range and managed to breach the 1000 dollar mark breach the 1000 dollar mark for the second time when it reached 1008 dollars around february 
नेक्स्ट इन द ईयर 2017 बिटकॉइन विटनेस एन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड बूम एंड मैनेज टू क्रॉस 10000 डॉलर मार्क इट ब्रीफली रीच्ड इवन 17000 टू 50 डॉलर अप्रोक्सीमेटली अराउंड दिसंबर 2017 एंड द ईयर 2008 टर्न आउट टू बी अगेन द डाउनहिल विद द बिटकॉइन वैल्यू विटनेसिंग फ्री फॉल फॉर द मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द ईयर एंड ओनली टू स्टेबलाइज बाय द एंड ऑफ 2018 रीचिंग एंड मेंटेनिंग इट्स वैल्यू अराउंड 3000 डॉलर मार्क from 2019 to 21 bitcoin again rallied to newer heights and briefly reached its highest value of around 67617 dollars in november 21 and from november 21 bitcoin once again dipped in value so it has been a journey of highs and lows continuously and in terms of adoption el salvador became the first country to recognize bitcoin as a legal tender in 2021 el salvador has been experimenting with the use of bitcoin as a currency since 2019 and the legislative assembly of el salvador passed a bill in june 2021 which recognized bitcoin as a legal currency with el salvador in february 22 ukraine also announced the legislation of cryptocurrencies with limitations and similarly central african republic passed a law in april 2022 legalizing the use of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies alongside so we can see that gradually country by country the cryptocurrencies and bitcoin in particular have been adopted to summarize in this video we discussed the pricing and market cap history and evolution of bitcoin we noted that it has been a history filled with booms and busts however overall bitcoin has gained from a very small value to value in multiple thousands of dollars also gradually as the bitcoin has gained value more and more countries have adopted and recognized its significance in this video we'll discuss the market activity of a very important cryptocurrency that is ether which runs on ethereum blockchain ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain system that features its own cryptocurrency ether ether works as platform for numerous other cryptocurrencies as well as for the execution of decentralized smart contracts introduced in 2015 ethereum is only second to bitcoin in market cap at about 16% it witnessed tremendous growth especially during covid-19 when its market cap almost doubled from august 20 to april 2021 and we can see here from a low value close to zero a sharp rise from 21 onwards though the period has been volatile and tumultuous we can see the booms and busts and then a steady rise again now ethereum was first described in 2013 in a white paper by Vitalik Buterin with Buterin along with other co-founders secured funding for the project in an online public crowd sale in summer of 2014 the project team managed to raise around 18.3 million in bitcoin and ethereum's price in the initial coin offering was around 0.311 dollar with over 60 million ether sold now taking ethereum's price now this puts the return on investment at an analyzed rate of around 270% essentially almost quadrupling your investment every year since the summer of 2014 now ethereum's pop popularity comes from the platform that the ethereum ecosystem offers the platform enables building and working on new tools defi ecosystem smart contracts among others its growth will likely continue as individuals and corporations increase interest and use ethereum related infrastructure and various blockchain services the Ethereum Foundation officially launched the blockchain on July 2015 under the prototype named Frontier and since then there has been several network updates like Constantinople on February 2019 Istanbul on December 2019 Muir Glacier in January 2020 Berlin in April 21 and most recently August 21 the London hard fork from 2015 to 21 the market capitalization of ether remained well under 200 billion dollar mark but from february 21 ethereum grew at an unprecedented rate and breached the 500 dollar billion mark capitalization mark briefly on october 21 now based on this discussion we can see there has been sort of volatile rise in ethereum prices and it has created a space for itself its own purported goal is to become a global platform for decentralized applications allowing users from all over the world to write and run software that is resistant to censorship downtime and fraud to summarize this video we discussed the historical price evolution of 
Ethereum and its market cap. We noted that along with alongside with Bitcoin, Ethereum has also created a space for its own because of particularly because of the platform or the blockchain of Ethereum on which the Ether currency runs and the feature that blockchain offers. It has successfully grown over last 10 years. In this video, we'll draw a comparison and parallel between cryptocurrency and fiat money. A frequently asked question is whether cryptocurrencies can be defined as money. The short answer is cryptocurrency are not exactly a form of money. And to answer this question, we can ask whether the characteristics of cryptocurrencies match the conventional key characteristics of money or not. First, let's talk about widely accepted means of payment. Can cryptocurrency be used to buy and sell things? Money generally comes in the form of a nation's currency and is widely accepted as a means of payment. While cryptocurrencies can be used to buy and sell things, they are not exactly widely accepted as a means of payment for various goods and services. And surveys suggest that only a small fraction of cryptocurrency holders use them regularly as a means of payments. The next is store of value. Can the purchasing power of cryptocurrencies, that is their ability to purchase a similar basket of goods and services, be maintained over time, accounting for inflation? Large fluctuations in the price of many cryptocurrencies mean that their purchasing power or the value is not maintained over time, reducing their effectiveness as a store of value. Lastly, as a unit of account, are cryptocurrencies a common way of measuring the value of goods and services? In various countries like US, UK, Australia, the price of goods and services are measured in respective currencies like dollar, pound and so on. While some businesses may accept cryptocurrencies as payment, they are not very commonly used as a measure or unit of account and compare prices. So while cryptocurrencies can be used to make payments, currently their use as a means of payment is limited and they do not display the key characteristics of money as we discussed here. However, there is one type of digital currency that could be considered money, which is the digital currency issued by a central bank. However, this project is in various stages of infancy across different central banks of different countries. To summarize, in this video, we compared and drew parallel between fiat money and cryptocurrency across three dimensions, which is as a use of modes of payment, store of value and unit of account. We noted while that cryptocurrencies do not exactly fit the bill and can be compared with the conventional form of money, still there is a scope for central banking digital currencies which are initiated by the respective central banks and in future they may become successful experiments as an alternative to forms of fiat money. In a series of next two videos, we will discuss the limitations of conventional form of cryptocurrency mode of operation that is through permissionless blockchains. We highlight that there are economic limitations inherent in decentralized creation of trust. To begin with, trust can evaporate at any time because of the fragility of the decentralized consensus through which transactions are recorded. This is so because here trust is being created by actions of miners who are predominantly acting on basis self-interest and there is no such authority where which everybody can place their trust on. Next. It also means that a cryptocurrency can simply stop functioning, resulting in a complete loss of value. So if that trust is lost, maybe through some kind of scam, some fraudulent action, if that trust has gone, then suddenly there is a complete loss of value in the system. Moreover, cryptocurrency technology comes with very poor efficiency and vast energy. use. So mining process requires heavy energy consumption and as the supply becomes limited, excessive energy consumption levels are witnessed. Also, cryptocurrencies cannot scale with transaction demand and are prone to conjunction with may greatly fluctuate the value. So as each and the transaction volume increases, the system is designed that with more and more traffic, the blocks get may get saturated and extra transactions may have to wait the system and this delay may lead to fluctuations in the va value of the transaction itself or the value of cryptocurrency itself because of this delay in transaction. Overall, this decentralized technology of cryptocurrencies, however sophisticated, is a poor substitute, appears to be a poor substitute for solid institutional backing of fiat currencies or fiat money. So, 
Crypto currencies such as Bitcoin promise to deliver not only a convenient payment ease based on digital technology, but also a novel mode of trust. Yet, delivering on this promise hinges on some critical assumptions. For example, whether honest miners control the vast majority of computing mine power, and also that users verify the history of all the transactions and that the supply of currency is predetermined by a protocol. Understanding these assumptions is very important for they give rise to two basic questions regarding the usefulness of cryptocurrencies. First, does this cumbersome way of trying to achieve trust come at the expense of efficiency, huge consumption of electricity and power? And second, can this trust truly and always be achieved? So, as the first question implies, a key potential limitation in terms of efficiency is the enormous cost of generating this decentralized trust. So one would expect the miners to compete to add new blocks to the ledger through the proof of work or some similar consensus mechanism until their anticipated profits go. And this leads to exponential rise, exponential rise in power consumption as we can see here over the year last 5 to 7 years there has been exponential rise in power consumption. So the individual facilities operated by miners can host computing power equivalent to that of millions of personal computers. So there is an exponential rise in power and those with large setup can guzzle powers like anything. The total electricity use of Bitcoin mining equated to that of mid-size economies such as Switzerland and other cryptocurrencies also use huge amount of electricity. So you can imagine the kind of power consumption that is involved with a consensus or what mechanism such as proof of work. Lastly, the quest for decentralized trust has quickly become an environmental disaster. As we can see with these huge energy consumptions, it is completely in contradiction with current requirements of sustainable environment and lower energy and renewable energy consumption. To summarize, in this video we discussed that creation of trust is one of the most important aspect of decentralized permissionless blockchain based cryptocurrencies. However, there are two very important questions. One, at what cost this trust is achieved because it requires a lot of energy consumption and even if that is there, can that trust truly be achieved at all times? In the next video, we will answer the second question. In this video, we will conclude our discussion on limitations of cryptocurrency operations due to permissionless blockchains. Please note, the underlying economic problems with cryptocurrencies go well beyond just the energy issue and they also relate to the signature property of money that is to serve and act as coordination device for economic activity among users. These shortcomings of cryptocurrencies in this aspect lie in three areas particularly. First is scalability, second stability of value and third the trust in the finality of payments. Let us discuss them one by one. So first the scalability aspect. Cryptocurrencies simply do not scale like sovereign money. At the most basic level, to live up to their promise of decentralized trust, cryptocurrencies require each and every user to download and verify the history of all transactions ever made, including amount paid, payer, pay and other details. With every transaction adding a few hundred bytes, the ledger grows substantially over time. Thus, to keep the ledger size and the time needed to verify all transactions, which increases block size. So, to keep the time needed to verify all the transactions manageable, cryptocurrencies have hard limits on the throughput of transactions. But the issue goes well beyond storage capacity and extends to processing capacity and that is only supercomputers could keep with verification of the incoming transactions. The associated communication volumes could bring the internet to a halt as millions of users exchange files on the order of magnitude of a terabyte. Another aspect of the scalability issue is that updating the ledger is subject to congestion. For example, in blockchain based cryptocurrencies, in order to limit the number of transactions added to the ledger at any given point in time, new blocks can only be added at pre-specified intervals. And once the number of incoming transactions is such that the newly added blocks are already at the maximum size permitted by the protocol, the system congests and many transactions go into a queue. With capacity capped, fees soar whenever transaction demand reaches the capacity limit and transactions have at times remained in a queue for several hours interrupting the payment process. This limits cryptocurrencies usefulness for day to day transactions such as paying for a coffee or a conference fee not to mention the 
wholesale payments and thus the more people use a cryptocurrency the more cumbersome payments become this negates an essential property of present day money that is the more people use it the stronger it should have an incentive to use it the second key issue is the stability of value with cryptocurrencies their values are unstable in nature this arises from the absence of central authority central issuer with a mandate to guarantee the currency is stable well run central banks succeed in stabilizing the domestic value of their sovereign currency by adjusting the supply of the means of payment in line with transaction demand they do so at high frequency in particular during times of market stress but also during normal times and this contrast with a cryptocurrency where generating some confidence in its value requires that supply be determined by a protocol this prevents it from being elastic therefore any fluctuation in demand translates into changes in valuation this means cryptocurrency valuations are extremely volatile and the inherent stability is unlikely to be fully overcome by better protocols or financial engineering as exemplified by the experience of dai cryptocurrency while engineered to be fixed to the us dollar at a rate of 1 to 1 it reached the low of 0.72 dollar 0.72 dollars just a few weeks after its launch in 2017 other cryptocurrencies designed to have stable value have also fluctuated substantially and this outcome is not coincidental so you can see their fluctuations keeping the supply of the means of payment in line with transaction demand requires a central authority of it typically the central bank which can expand or contract its balance sheet now the authority needs to be willing at times to trade against the market even if this means taking risk onto its balance sheet and absorbing a loss in a decentralized network of cryptocurrency users there is no central agent with the obligation or incentives to stabilize the value of the currency whenever demand for the cryptocurrency decreases so does its price and further contributing to unstable valuation is the speed at which new cryptocurrencies all tending to be very closely substitutable with one another come into existence lastly the third issue concerns the fragile foundation of the trust in cryptocurrencies and this leads to uncertainty about the finality of individual payments as well as the trust in the value of individual currencies so this relates to the uncertainty about the finality of individual payments as well as the trust in the value of individual cryptocurrencies in mainstream payment systems once an individual payment makes its way through the national payment system and ultimately through the central bank books it cannot be revoked in contrast permissionless cryptocurrencies cannot guarantee the finality of individual payments one reason is that although users can verify that a specific transaction is included in a ledger unknown to them there can be rival versions of the ledger this can result in a transaction rollbacks for example when two miners update the ledger almost at the same time since only one of the two updates can ultimately survive the finality of payments made in each ledger, ledger version is probabilistic in nature the lack of payment finality is exacerbated by the fact that cryptocurrencies can be manipulated by miners controlling substantial computing power a real possibility given the concentration of mining for many cryptocurrencies so one cannot tell if a strategic attack is underway because an attacker would reveal the forged ledger only once they were sure of success this implies that finality will always remain uncertain for cryptocurrencies each update of the ledger comes with an additional proof of work that an attacker would have to reproduce yet while the probability that a payment is final increases with the number of subsequent ledger updates it never reaches 100% not only is the trust in individual payments uncertain but the underpinning of trust in each cryptocurrency is also fragile and this is due to forking this is a process where a subset of cryptocurrency holders coordinate on using a few version of the ledger and protocol while others stick to the original one in this way a cryptocurrency can split into two sub networks of users and this forking may only be a symptomatic of a fundamental shortcoming that is the fragility of decentralized consensus involved in updating the ledger and with it the underlying trust in the the underlying trust in the cryptocurrency so to summarize we discussed three key issues which results in fundamental underlying economic problems into cryptocurrency first is the problem of scalability that is cryptocurrencies simply do not scale like sovereign money second issue of stability of value 
cryptocurrencies are sort of uncertain in their value which results or arises from the absence of a central issuer like a government with a mandate to guarantee its value and stability and lastly the trust in finality of payments which relates to uncertainty about the finality of individual payments as well as the trust in the value of individual cryptocurrencies in this video we'll make a short comparison across different parameters between the conventional fiat currencies and cryptocurrency in the context of fiat currencies due to their nature such as physical cash and system of operations such as banking and logistics of movement of cash in physical form there is inconvenience in terms of transportation and logistics and storing of cash into vaults and so on however the same aspect of transportation and logistics is much easier in case of cryptocurrency because they are purely digital in terms of security parameter for fiat currencies it is taken care of by the central authority such as central bank so central bank keeps take care of security through various measures for example security and secrecy in the printing of money and various other security protocols for digital form of money for example for your banking deposits there is a banking and payment system that ensures security in contrast in case of cryptocurrency there is a cryptographic protocol such in which includes hash functions and this cryptographic mechanism is employed to safeguard and securitize the transaction details and any other information the next parameter is record keeping here for every transaction there is a maintenance of record in the books of some central authority this includes the central bank like rbi in india and also when there is a transfer or some kind of transaction across deposits then that particular bank which is taking taking care of the payment system so it is driven by the instructions from that authorized central party how the transactions are recorded in contrast in the context of cryptocurrency the record keeping is pretty much automatic there is no such central authority and on the blockchain on which the transaction has taken place there are nodes or users and miners and on each of these parties each of these parties on the blockchain they have their own ledger this is called distributed ledger technology so everybody has own ledger and each of the ledger is updated automatically by the blockchain mechanism the next aspect is counterfeiting so in the context of fiat currency it is feasible and sort of inevitable nuisance as every time there is a new form of currency in different shapes and designs there is a possibility of being count counterfeited by malicious elements because this is sort of man versus man and technology versus technology kind of thing where it is there's always a challenge of counterfeit in case of cryptocurrencies counterfeiting becomes next to impossible because of the cryptographic mechanism hash functions and other security details which is automatically driven it is next to impossible and requires huge amount of computing power and also again all the consensus mechanism and other such similar cryptographic details they ensure that counterfeiting is impossible and more particularly the problem of double spending is not there next is the issue of issuance the issuance of currency in case of fiat and conventional form is taken care of by the central authority under the given democrat demographic and political system so there is a democratic and political system in conjunction with central bank they ensure how the issuance of currency takes place in contrast in the case of cryptocurrency there is a fixed set of predetermined rules that were determined at the very beginning which ensures how supply of the currency will take place for example in case of bitcoin the maximum supply is limited as 21 million and that ensures and there are set of fixed rules and codes and algorithms that determine how the currency issuance will take place next is the payment clearing in case of fiat currency the clearing is done in a centralized manner for example if i am transferring my money across deposits this is done by the bank if a bank is clearing its deposits or transacting across banks the clearing is done at the central bank level so banks maintain certain reserves with the central bank so essentially every transaction is authorized or sort of clearing mechanism it is done in a centralized manner where there is a authorized central party which sort of approves or authorizes the transaction in contrast to this the payment and clearing takes place through 
a distributed ledger technology mechanism in cryptocurrencies where there is a entire system of chain which starts which starts in a cryptographic manner where the transaction is announced then the miners mine the block they solve a cryptographic puzzle successfully once a in block of information is mined successfully verified it gets added to the blockchain and transaction is completed so there is a sort of endogenous mechanism which is based on distributed ledger technology and it does not require the presence of central counterpart coming to the authentication part so in terms of authentication there is a trusted counterparty in case of fiat currency across every transactions there is either the central bank central bank like in india it is rbi or if it is between two individuals through bank deposits then the bank who is acting as an intermediary act as a trusted counterparty which does sort of things like kyc and other takes a lot of details of the depositors and whatever transaction is happening they have this two two step security mechanism they we have done your kyc they have your mobile number aadhar card and so on so there is a trusted counterparty on which both the parties rely in case of cryptocurrency there is no such kyc mechanism the authentication is a built in mechanism which is done through a cryptographic process there are well established cryptographic protocols through which for example we discuss the consensus mechanism and the role of miners who sort of process the block solve a mathematical puzzle verify and then all the nodes on the blockchain verify the node update the ledger and so on so there is a built in cryptographic protocol to authenticate any transaction next the problem of double spending that a money given set of coin or money or cash is not spent twice so here in fiat currency there is always a central authority like central bank or an intermediary between two parties if it is bank deposits then it is the banking commercial bank who takes care of this authorization and verification that double spending is not there so there is a central authority in which both the parties across both the legs of transaction both the parties they trust in contrast cryptocurrency transactions takes place on a peer to peer network on blockchain and this thing is resolved by the entire cryptographic mechanism as we discussed through consensus mechanism role of miners solving a mathematical puzzle and all those steps are taken to ensure that a given coin is not spent twice and there is a sort of trust and trust across parties is created through this cryptographic mechanism miners are incentivized through a fee to verify all the transactions and through a majority consensus more than 50 50% maybe 51% or more kind of consensus is built to verify the transaction and ensure that there is no double spending or a malicious attack so it's sort of inbuilt cryptographic mechanism in terms of privacy this is a strong aspect of cryptocurrency in fiat currency if you are part of the banking payment and monetary system and economy the banks will do your know your customer kyc forms and all the details will be taken for you so that there is no anonymity all your transactions bank accounts will be known all the income tax filings and everything will be there so your identity is very well known in the system you can't do any fraudulent transaction or any such even if you want to maintain anonymity for different reasons is difficult in case of cryptocurrency it's like pseudonymous it's not that open only if you recall our discussions only your public key is open so your exact real identity is hidden behind your private key only your public key is known which is not exactly your real identity so we are calling it as pseudonymous so the transaction you transact so your pseudonym which is your public key and it is not so much open so this cryptocurrency transactions give you the benefit of anonymity but there are two sides to it some people say that this anonymity also leads to money funding towards terrorism and all sort of uh, sort of not so good activities the cryptocurrency can be used there so it has its both sides pro and cons for having excessive anonymity in cryptocurrency transactions so to summarize we compared and contrasted fiat conventional currencies and with cryptocurrencies on these parameters related to logistics and transportation security record keeping counterfeiting issuance payment clearing authentication double spending and privacy to summarize this lesson we noted how blockchain technology with its tamper evident and tamper resistant digital ledgers facilitates secure transactions in cryptocurrencies we noted how modern day economies employ monetary and payment systems which are regulated by central banks This system can be explained with the help of money flower taxonomy with the following key dimensions namely digital widely accessible and third role of central banks and lastly peer to peer lending in this backdrop cryptocurrencies have emerged as a new flower following in the peer to peer digital dimensions 
without the intermediation of central authority such as central banks in the last 5 to 7 years there has been a considerable rise of interest among the investor community about cryptocurrency assets this has reflected in periodic boom and bust in the market cap of major crypto assets such as bitcoin and ether moreover crypto assets have been found to be extremely speculative with prices fluctuating due to attention grabbing events for example elon musk tweets we highlighted two kinds of distributed ledgers including permissioned and permissionless cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies predominantly employ permissionless blockchain models to solve the double spending problem a simple cryptocurrency transaction would involve the following steps first a user initiates the transaction and the same is announced over the network this information is added to the block the miners on the network rush to mine the block through proof of work or some other consensus model the first miner to process the block gets the block in her name and the block is added to the blockchain and thus the transaction is confirmed these cryptocurrencies come with several benefits as low transaction cost no central authority and in turn no regulations related to transaction as would be customarily observed in the conventional fiat money privacy and security to transfer funds freely across jurisdictions these are some of the important benefits we also discussed two major cryptocurrencies including bitcoin and ether and noted the sharp rise in prices over the years coupled with price fluctuations we also noted that a number of countries have adopted these currencies also when compared with the fiat money on several parameters such as means of payment store of value and unit of account these cryptocurrencies have still long way to go moreover the fact that these crypto assets work on permissionless blockchain in the absence of a central authority some extra efforts are required to generate trust often this trust creation process is a costly and less efficient affair than the conventional fiat money